Hey guys, if you're new here, my name's Ian. If you're not, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about this, the iPhone 14 Pro Max. So I've been using this phone now for five months, and we have some things to talk about. So we're going to break this up into two, two parts, I guess. What I have what I like, what I dislike. And right now, it's leaning a lot more towards what I dislike. Because... While this was an upgrade, it wasn't that big of an upgrade. Like, looking back, Apple did some cool things. So, personally, what I like about this is Dynamic Island. The ability to have something adapt and interact and move is something we haven't seen before from, I don't believe, any smartphone manufacturer. I could be wrong. Um, but Apple took the notch, something that had to be there for Face ID and our uh, selfie camera, and decided to change it completely and just make it interactive. And I thought that was a really smart decision. Initially, we were hearing rumors it was going to be an eye-shaped pill hole, which I thought would be pretty cool. Um, but I really like how Dynamic Island, I love it. You play music, it, it expands, you have navigation, it expands, it splits into different apps. It's so cool. What I also like is MagSafe. Now, this isn't exclusive to the iPhone 14 lineup, but it's a great thing to have on any iPhone. And now, this is also the first year we did get a massive increase in camera quality, which as someone who uses his selfie camera more than, I'd say, other cameras on my phone, I'll take it. It's a nice increase. Um, it does have uh, optical image stabilization and I believe 48 megapixels as well. So it was pretty cool getting better pictures from coming from the 12 megapixels we've had for years with the from the iPhone 6. So back when iOS 8 was released, so almost 8 years now. But what I dislike about this. So as you can tell, my always on display isn't on. The always on display, even with the new options to turn off your wallpaper and only show the time. Like I get there was a need for it and there was a want and desire from customers, believe me. I use it on my Apple Watch all the time. I love it. But what was the need? for adding it to the iPhone the way they added it. So here, if we turn it on on my iPhone, which is another thing we have to talk about. So to turn it on, you have to go into settings, general, display and brightness, and then turn it on. Now, I have it set to show my wallpaper because I thought it'd be cool to always see the wallpaper. And while it does do some cool things, like if you're wearing an Apple Watch, walk away from it, it'll turn off your screen, which I think is so cool because it's saving your battery. Right now, this is drawing battery. Even though it doesn't look like it's on, it's on because now it's on. But now it's on again. Um, and if you put it face down or in a pocket, it does go off. But from my experience, it doesn't always go off, which is annoying because if I'm, you're in my pocket, you don't need to be wasting battery because the battery life on this iPhone, I don't know what Apple did compared to the 13 Pro Max, but the battery life on this, I get maybe four hours of on-screen time. I basically doubled that with my 13 Pro Max. And now it might be an iOS 16 problem, which is a mess. But it really is just makes me wonder, what are they doing? Like, why you had such a good product with the iPhone 13, and then you kind of trashed it. Now, yes, I will still use this iPhone every day. Um, I'm not going back to my 13 Pro Max. I gave it to a family member, so I don't really even have that option anymore. Now, it's so much wrong with iOS 16, I feel like, that we just have to talk about it. Because iOS 16 has been a mess. I don't remember the last time we've got an iOS update like that. It actually might have been iOS 14. And iOS 14 was more of us nitpicking at what we really didn't like. iOS 16 has been filled with bugs, I feel like, since it was released. Actually, since it was in beta. I remember when I ran the beta on my 13 Pro Max. And I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. But my iPhone got hot to the point where it was ready to start a fire. Like, I would not have been surprised if the battery, like, just sparked at some point. Um, I did end up going back to iOS 15, though, because I was just like, this is not worth it. It is not worth having a freaking thing that can spark on me. And it just wasn't worth it. And then when iOS 16 came out, I downloaded it the day of. Why? Watch OS 9. That's really the whole reason I upgraded to iOS 16. And of course, when I got my new iPhone, I would have had, obviously had iOS 16. There's no way around that. But between the, 
the app switcher not working, the software just being unresponsive and slow, possibly contributing to my battery life that's horrible. I've heard on Twitter, people are in the same boat as I am. I'm not the only person who's like, this sucks. And even the fact that we still can't move apps in the app library really upsets me because Apple put Freeform in the other category. It should be in the creativity category. Why, like, let me move it to where I want it because I use Freeform, I love Freeform, but now you're hiding it on me and that's just unnecessary. And we've also had some just weird bugs. Like there was at one point with the, the dynamic wallpapers that change, like the astronomy one, as you swipe up to your uh, home screen, it'll zoom in on where you are on the earth. Um, if you were playing music and using the cover view, which took over your whole lock screen, that just went away. You, you lost that. Now, do I regret upgrading? I don't. I love the phone. Um, dynamic Island is honestly what really sells me on it, which you don't have to update, upgrade just for the gimmick of Dynamic Island. Like, it's, pre it's pretty cool. Um, will I ever turn back on the Always On Display? Maybe. Really depends on how Apple treats iOS 16 and battery life. Because it has been a little while since we've gotten an iOS beta. Um, they just released 16.3.1, and it took them a very long time from iOS 16.3, and everyone was kind of shocked by that. Now... I got a question for you guys. If you have had a similar experience with the iPhone 14 Pro, Pro Max, um, I want to hear from you. Like, let's have a conversation about this, because, look, maybe mine is just a dud, which, honestly, it's possible. Maybe my bat is something wrong with the battery or something. Who knows? Um, so I want to hear from you guys. If you've had a similar experience with me, if you've turned off the always-on display, um, I want to hear from you. So drop a comment down below. And while you're down there, if you want to hit me, do me a favor and hit the like button or subscribe, I'd appreciate it because that tells me you enjoy the content I'm posting. And that's it for me. So remember, today's a good day. It's been a great day. And I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.